Hi, Scorpio. Welcome to your January 2018 astral update. So, Scorpio, what is on tap for you in the first month of 2018? Uh, there's a lot of emphasis on communication for you. And you might be saying, communication, what does that have to do with my life? Well, I don't know. Let's talk about some of the longer term uh, transits in this third house, because this is Capricorn for you. And um, Saturn has just recently gone in there. Now I'm going to just talk about Pluto, because Pluto has been in your third house for 10 years. Just to recap on, on what Pluto does for a person when it transits a certain house, it can be a very transformative influence. It can take you from one place and one attitude and bring you somewhere else. And as it does this, it tears down all of maybe your belief uh, systems regarding a certain issue and and then it brings it back up. That's where that regenerative quality, that healing quality comes from. But in the interim, in that in-between process, it can be quite intense. And Pluto is one of the planets that rules Scorpio along with uh, Mars. So, you know, talk about intense. There is that, that's where that intensity comes from. And the third house is about learning when it comes to like short bursts of learning. So if you are doing anything to certify yourself to get um, a certain qualification for your job, or maybe you want to be able to go after certain job positions and you have to get certain c certificates beforehand, that could be what's happening for you. And even just in terms of learning in general, perhaps you're somebody who struggled when you were younger with learning and you devised or were exposed to a different type of learning style. And now you are um, very immersed in research or just learning for the sake of learning because the third house is ruled by the planet Mercury in the sign of Gemini. And Gemini loves knowledge for its own sake, not necessarily to be applied, like I just said, for a certificate. But the reason I brought up this thing about certification is because Saturn recently entering this house is grounding your learning. So it's not just for entertainment purposes. It's also for advancement, career advancement particularly, and maybe even financial reward. The third house is also the house of siblings and perhaps cousins and so and and also neighbors, people in your local area. But talking specifically about your um, siblings and thinking of Plutonian influence, you may have, uh, you may at the end of this transit have a totally different relationship with your brothers and sisters th than you had when you were younger. You may understand what makes them tick. Whereas when you were growing up, you may have jump to conclusions about them, perhaps because there was sibling rivalry, because sometimes with Pluto and that, that connection to Scorpio, there is jealousy that has to be dealt with. And you may transform this into a higher type of emotion during this transit. And of course, Pluto is going to be there until 2023. So you're going, to, you're going to have a little bit of more uh, transformation when it comes to this third house to go. So five more years, but you may already have been seeing some of this, these results. And um, if you're somebody who likes to write, or you like, you want to be like a public speaker, you can be very powerful 
with Pluto in the third house. And your words can really pack a punch. So in saying this, be careful of your communication. Make sure that um, there's this term called witch messages. And maybe we shouldn't uh, malign witches and, and say that witches are evil or anything like that. But the, but the phrase itself, forget about um, the fact that I said witch, um, about this thing of like casting a spell with your words. Um, people a lot of times are very careless when they speak and they don't realize the power that words contain. You may think that, oh, they know I didn't really mean it when I said this. And yet it's something that people always remember. And even if you apologize for something that you've said in haste, there are people that will always believe that you really meant it. And so with Pluto in the third house, your communication becomes even more intense. And I would even say magical and um, powerful. So even like, I would even say, if you get involved with affirmations, it, they can really help you if you begin to utilize them because your, your words carry even more power during this time. But yeah, with Saturn in the third house for the next few years, you can really make the most of this sector, which includes the internet. And if you've ever had a desire to have an internet based business, this could be very good for that. So the, the month begins with a full moon in the opposite house of the third house of communication, the ninth house that Sagittarius rules in the universal chart. Now, these issues or these themes of the ninth house are your philosophical framework. This is the God house. So this can be religion in the outward kind of a way versus the occult of the eighth house and the mysticism of the 12th house, both water houses. This is more of the worldly um, construct of what we consider to be our ethics, our values, and things of that nature. The ninth house is also the house of higher education. So a full moon in Cancer, a super moon in this house could uh, see the ending for some people of their, their education. Perhaps you are graduating. And yes, you can graduate in the winter. I did. When I went back to school in my 30s, I um, actually graduated in December. So it's possible to end your education at a time other than May or June. And you may come to some realization about um, some course of studies or your university training itself. You know, it's possible that you will see the truth of a situation will be illuminated. And it could be that you decide to drop out because you see that there is indoctrination happening and you don't feel like you are being urged to think for yourself. <laughs> I'm kind of superimposing my own um, opinion on, on things um, based on some of my experiences but that's just one possibility. It could be that you are graduating. It could be that you are um, taking on a full uh, set of courses. Maybe you were going part-time and now you've decided to enroll full-time. There are many possibilities. Uh, maybe you've completed a writing project, a novel, and now it's time for publishing. And this could also be about a trip. Maybe you've taken a long distance trip and you're coming back. The very, that's on the first or the second of the month, depending on where you live. So it's very powerful to have a super moon at the beginning of the month at 11 degrees, the master number. At the end of the month, we have another um, 11 degree full moon, which is a blue moon and a total lunar eclipse. So I think January is starting out with a bang. And it's like book ended by two endings. Um, you know, so to speak, it could be two illuminations, especially at the 11 degree mark. But I'll get to the, the second full moon in a little bit. 
On the second of the month, Uranus turns direct at 24 degrees of Aries in your sixth house of health. Um, and for you, Scorpio, this is an area that perhaps has seen a lot of, uh, with your employment, you've, you might've had a lot of unusual occurrences. Perhaps you've been working, um, different jobs and, and they don't seem to last very long. Uranus is going to dip into your seventh house briefly in 2018. I can't tell you exactly when, but, um, it's going to go back into this sector and be gone for good in 2019. So if you've been feeling a little bit like you don't know which end is up when it comes to employment, just understand that this too shall pass and um, you will have, um, it'll, it'll be nice to, to n maybe have a steady job again, but the other thing about this um, influence of Uranus in the sixth house is it can expose you to possible, I would say, even understanding your consciousness as it connects to your health, your physical health, uh, the Uranian energy, and maybe into offbeat um, health uh, protocols like that, that, you know, that are not mainstream because Uranus is always going to be, um, very, maybe ahead of its time. So we're talking about Reiki healing, any energy healing, as well as perhaps, um, even nutritional types of uh, protocols that are not part of the, the, the allopathic, um, you know, protocol. And let's see here. So Mercury goes into Capricorn on the 11th. And again, we're talking about that third house. Mercury is very ho at home here because it rules that house. Um, but until then, it's going to be in your second house. So until the 11th, you have Mercury and Sag. And it's still coming up to speed. Um, this is the house where you experienced your Mercury retrograde in December. So you may have some issues related to the money that you earn where it is still kind of getting sorted out, even in January. So take heart if you've had any kind of um, slowdown in your in the money that you earn because by the time of the 11th, when Mercury goes into the third house, you will be back to normal. In the third house, it's going to give you even more of an urge to communicate and to maybe research um, the ideas of um, starting a YouTube channel, starting a blog, what are the ins and outs of it, um, setting up an Etsy shop if you're a crafty type of person, etc. On the 31st, Mercury goes into your fourth house. Now the fourth house is the house of home and family. So you could also with Mercury in the third, be talking to siblings and then talking to your parents, especially your mother. And so this could be family business that you're discussing for some reason. The new moon on, and also if you're uh, dealing with anything, selling a house, um, that could also be the case because the third house can be your local area and you may be like doing research on it. And then with the fourth house, you're like signing contracts, the Mercury can be contracts. Um, after the second and especially after the 10th of the month, when Mercury goes back up to speed, it's a great time to start new things because then all the plants are direct and Mercury is up to speed. On the 16th, there's a new moon in Capricorn, 26 Capricorn, again in that third house. Maybe new beginnings with something related to communication or um, getting some kind of job training. The very next day, you have Venus going into your fourth house. So Venus has been in that third house, very good for harmony with siblings 
And uh, in the fourth house, Venus can bring money. Uh, so that could be good if you're trying to buy a house where now you have the money to put down on this high ticket item. And Venus is all about luxury. And uh, with the fourth house, you're talking about um, a a big ticket purchase for sure. Even if it's just a down payment, it's still going to be a lot of money. So that could be, um, or maybe you're selling a house and you're um, getting the proceeds from this house. It could also be if there's some kind of estate with um, the siblings, maybe you're not actually going into some kind of probate situation, but you're simply getting money from the family and the siblings are involved and you're kind of sorting all of that out. On the 26th, Sagittarius, uh, Mars goes into Sagittarius. So Scorpio, Mars has been in your sign all month long until the 26th. Mars in your sign, especially because Scorpio is so intense, can mean that, and you're ruled by Mars in addition to Pluto. I don't know how many of you know that. But um, this is going to be, I think, a relief for all of us, Mars leaving Scorpio, because it is very probing, um, Perry Mason on steroids, and aggressive, you know, there's an aggression there. When Mars goes into your second house, on uh, the 26th, you're going to be really stoked to just boogie down and earn some dough. And you may be like, I'm willing to do anything. I'm willing to work hard. I'm willing to work overtime. You're going to have a lot of physical stamina to do this. And so if you are motivated, and Mars is all about your ambition, if you're motivated to earn money, you're going to earn money. You know, it just is logical. On the 31st, as I stated earlier, there's a total lunar eclipse at 11 Leo. This is your 10th house of career, Scorpio. So how will that affect you? Well, you may have heard that lunar eclipses take things away. And of course, that is always po a possibility. I would say that this is not like the tower card in the tarot. This is something that you, I believe that when things are taken away, we know deep down inside that they are for our highest good. So you're working in a career that you really have decided you can't stand for whatever reason. Maybe you, you think that it attracts people that are, uh, snakes, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Um, like, let's just say you work in the fashion industry, or maybe even in the beauty, you know, like the beauty industry of some sort. And you think to yourself, you know, at being a Scorpio, you think, you know, I am so much deeper than this. And this is so shallow, and I can't stand it. I thought I liked it. And now I don't. Um, maybe uh, something transpires where this kind of situation leaves you. But if you freak out that it's beyond your control, you're failing to see that the universe is conspiring on your behalf. This could be something where you willingly are retiring, um, letting it go because you realize that it's not your path anymore. It can be a realization about your career. I think because this is a very powerful full moon for those people who have been um, aspiring to make a name for themselves, that could be your time. Who knows? This is this could be like some kind of like a viral a sensation. It, you know, with all that third house connection to the internet, um, and you're trying to make it. Maybe some of you will just suddenly find yourself in the limelight with um, this lunar eclipse. So that could be very interesting for you. And and by the way, don't get uh, hung up on the 31st as the time when this happens. It, you can even see it before the actual date, but certainly afterwards, um, six months to a year even. So um, I just wanted to put that out there because this is a blue moon. And so in addition to being a, a total lunar eclipse, at 11 degrees, 
It's, uh, it's quite spectacular. So I hope that you enjoyed the Scorpio. And if you'd like a private reading, uh, the reading that is closest to this kind of a, a reading is my natal chart interpretation. And I've even added uh, 10 minutes to it. It's like an hour and 10 minutes uh, to just um, fully explore things. And of course, I can go on for hours about a natal chart. But um, um, if, you, if you're interested in seeing what that's about and my other offerings, please go to rainamoonastrology.com. The link is below for that. And good luck to you in January. Take care. Bye.